This is my Watkin bandsaw. It's a 30 inch diameter blades, solid cast iron table which tilts to 45 degrees, 5 horsepower motor. As far as I know, it was built about 1910. Ancient machine, but the bearings are as good as new. And it's extremely accurate. I bought it from a joinery business that had gone bankrupt. I paid £40 for it. It was going for scrap. And it's, it's an absolutely marvellous machine. Now, what I've had to do in order to, uh, to make it uh, usable, to bring it up to, um, to work accurately with it, I've put new guides on top and bottom. These are made by a firm called Chaco, which I believe is a Swiss firm. These have got low friction adjustable blocks here, uh, made out of some sort of plastic. They've got the thrust wheel here, and underneath the table there is a, an identical set of guides. The old guides that were on it were worn out and not very accurate, but these guides are so, so accurate and so adjustable, I can cut veneers on this machine. Well, Andy, this must be the envy of a lot of woodworkers out there. How on earth did you get it into your workshop? Well, Jeremy, that's a, that was a, a great question. How did we get it here? We had to dismantle it. We took the table off. We took the upper um, rise and fall mechanism off. So we, and we took the wheels off as well. So we, we were just left with the, uh, the main cast iron casting. And we had to um, load it onto a trailer. And with some difficulty, we managed to get it into the workshop on a series of rollers and then reassemble it in the building. So what, is, what else is there about this machine? I mean, have you got dust extraction, for instance, on it? Because it's so old and it was built long before anybody considered dust extraction, it's very difficult to, to achieve. So what I have to do is just put a, a, um, a flexible duct as near I can to the, to the blade and that sucks away most of the, uh, most of the fine dust. It, because in a small workshop like this it's not in use for long periods, the fact that it, it is rather dusty is, isn't a great problem. Well, it must be an absolute joy to use. Um, what's this? Is this some kind of ritualistic...? Um... Not, not quite, no. The, the reason I put these, blade, these um, three sticks around is large bandsaws like this, it, when they were in use, you have to put quite a lot of tension on the blade. And at the end of the working day, it's a good idea to slacken off the tension. Otherwise, it, it, it can it, it put a big strain on the, on the blade, which, which tends to shorten its life. So we slacken it off after, at the end of the day, or after we finish using it. We put these three sticks around just to remind ourselves that the blade's slack and we don't switch it on without tensioning the blade. Now, just a slight kind of distraction. We, I see you have your glasses again on the table. Is this some sort of, um, like Mouse Williams, the furniture maker who carved a mouse on everything, Andy? It's just an unconscious habit. Well, it, we're not going to cut them in half, hopefully. <laughs> um, what else about this fantastic machine? Here we've got a museum piece in a living, working workshop, you know, one, by one of Britain's finest designer makers. And what did you say? It went back to 1930s or no? Before us. Before. And when I bought this machine, the the, the um, rubber tyres were perished and, and uh, they, uh, weren't effective. So I contacted um, Watkin with a view to buying new new tyres for the wheels. Uh, they asked me for the machine serial number, which is DJ361, and they were astonished because their records only go back as far as DR, etc. And uh, that was back in the, the 1930s. So, so they think this machine dates from around about 1905, 1910, certainly pre-First World War. Uh, in the end, I was able to get some um, rubberized cork strip from a firm called Scott and Sargent and was able to replace the, uh, uh, the tyres. And that, uh, and so in terms of servicing this bandsaw, how often, for instance, would you have to replace the tyre or any other parts? Oh, very rarely. I, I haven't had to replace the, 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 the tyres. have got a very long life, so I haven't had to replace them in, in over 20 years. Uh, because it's such a simple machine, maintenance is really just a matter of uh, cleaning, lubrication, occasionally adjusting it, maybe new belts on the uh, drive belts for, for the motor. What about resinous woods? Um, not, most of the timbers I use aren't particularly resinous, uh, and it, 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 you can get a build-up of it on the saw blades, and that's easily cleaned off with the, 
Uh, the best thing I found is it is oven cleaner for getting a uh, residue of. Uh, um, now, one thing that off. one thing that really amazes me is the sheer size and the quality of the table. I mean, that ri I mean, you could stand on that and jump off it oh, without exactly. it it's flexing. Absolutely rigid, and it, it, as well as that, it tilts to forty-five degrees, which is not something I use very often. But it's a nice facility mm. to have, which is great for doing big components. There's nothing worse than a, a small mm. table that heavy items can fall off. So. And if it just makes it very safe to use having such a big table. And of course the other um, striking feature is this incredible um, throat or width. What is it? This will, it's 30 inches you can get to, in Imperial, so you can get many wide components in which it, again makes it very useful. Maybe we ought to talk about uh, the safety aspect of using an old machine like this. Is that wood? It is. It's, There's it's actually a bit of wood. On a metal bandsaw? Yes, Jeremy. This, as far as I know, this guard is original. It was on the machine when I got it. Um, and it's worth bearing in mind with these older bandsaws that safety is very minimal. For example, it hasn't got a brake. Um, and mo all these old machines do really need um, some modification to bring them up to current standards of health and safety. But, uh, having said all that, I wouldn't be without this machine for anything. A lot of my other machines I've gradually replaced over the years and bought more modern ones, but this bandsaw is so good, the advantages outweigh the, uh, the, uh, the few disadvantages with it.